Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to share with you my tips on how I got Docker certified and how I'm sure that these tips are gonna help you do the same. So first things first, do you need to invest in a practice exam before taking the Docker certified associate exam, the DCA? I would say no, right? And based on the tips and the references I'm gonna share with you, you'll see why. So stick around and you'll avoid those extra costs because the exam itself is already expensive enough. We're talking about 195 US dollars or 175 euros as was my case. So obviously saving on a practice exam, which for some certification exams is useful, uh, we're gonna bypass that with these tips, all right? So I've already put these resources in my blog. You can go check it out, bookmark it. Um, but we're gonna do this in video format, all right? So first thing is, you're gonna want a good Docker book. So my first experience with Docker was Docker in action. At the time, in about 2017, it was in first edition, since second edition now. I strongly recommend you read this book to get you started with Docker. Now, after you read this book, you're gonna to wanna to know exactly what you need to know for the DCA exam, right? It's in a question answer format, multiple choice. You've got 55 questions in 90 minutes and you have ample time to do that, right? I did it in, if it was an hour, that was the math. I think it was just under an hour it took me and I didn't feel any time pressure, right? So if you go to the Docker uh, site here, success.docker.com slash certification, again, description below will have all these uh, references to these um, links. Uh, you scroll down and you have a study guide. Now, this study guide over here obviously goes through everything you need to know for the exam. So it explains to you here um, an introduction and then it kind of goes through a breakdown of how the exam is gonna be broken up in terms of percentages. And then for every section of that exam, it lists for you all the points that you need to know. So as you scroll down this uh, study guide, you'll notice that there's quite a bit of stuff that you need to know. Now, that's very time consuming and a little bit intimidating, but I'm gonna share with you a reference in a second that actually goes through all the work and setting that up, okay? The last thing, a uh, uh, little tip here, is the sample test questions, right? You might wanna say, ah, these, you know, these test questions are you know, gonna be too easy, they're not gonna be on the exam, but I was extremely surprised at the questions that showed up on the exam, hint, hint. So I strongly recommend you go through these questions. It might be worth your time, if you know what I mean. So again, all these points, I discovered a, a page on GitHub here, and there are others, but this one I found uh, quite useful, that actually go through the study guide and on every point in every section show you through Docker documentation and through labs, video labs, how to actually go through this. So this is a huge time saver. And I found myself, hey Kat, I found myself going through this list uh, four times, right? So this is quite intensive, right? But you really gotta bang these out without thinking about it. So there's a lot of details in here. So let me go through um, an example here Right, so let's see here. If I click on complete the setup of a swarm mode cluster with managers and worker nodes, you'll see here that they have official Docker documentation links and then a video example on how to do that, right? So all this stuff is done for you, really helps you out in terms of you know time management because studying for the exam, I would say took me probably about a month of doing it every single day, okay? Before actually having the courage to schedule an exam. And I'll talk about that in a second as well. So Play With Docker is another resource I recommend. For example, uh, you, need to, you need to sign up, obviously. That takes a couple of seconds to do that. And then what happens is, is you can come up and create uh, nodes, instances, and in, case, in, in the case where you're building like a swarm cluster or something like that, uh, that's very useful. Uh, you can do this manually and set up your managers and set up your workers and stuff like that. Eventually, you're going to get to the point, though, 
that you already know how to do that and you want to practice stuff within your swarm so then you're going to want to probably come up with something more of like a, a configuration template so over here let's say i was using this one a lot three managers and two workers it'll set all these up for you so you don't have to do like a docker swarm in it to join and all that stuff and just concentrate on uh, the particular labs that uh, you want to do now i obviously also use my own personal labs uh, because you have to know Docker EE, which is the enterprise edition as well, which took me off by guard when I was looking through the steps of the study guide. I was surprised about that. But you need to know uh, several points on the Docker enterprise edition. So as you can see here, I got managers, three managers and a couple of worker notes here. So very useful doc, uh, play with Docker. Highly recommend that in order to bang home all these points on the study guide. Right. So the other thing, the other tip is you really should, besides reading the book initially, right? All the documentation that Docker puts out really is uh, something you should be going to and reading. So we have the Docker Success Center site and also the Docker documentation. And you really should be going there when preparing for the exam. And I say this because Docker loves its own documentation obviously and you'll notice that the questions that you get on the exam really come from this um, this area this documentation right so the good thing is is all the points that are covered on github page here they all link to the docker documentation right or 95 percent of it so that's already um, amazing so you know that the information that you're reading and the points that you're uh, covering are really what you need to know to pass the exam. So once you've done all that, like I said, I did these questions uh, and the labs four times over, right? Maybe a little bit of overkill, maybe twice was enough, <laughs> but you know, I, I think I might have overstudied, um, but I passed. Um, the last thing I would say is you need to practice question and answer uh, formats, right? Now, this is where you're going to be like, oh, man, I need to invest in a practice test, right? Or you come up with your own questions and answers. But, you know, you get a little insecure and you, you start thinking of investing in these exams. So don't do that, right? I didn't do that. And I found an amazing site that really helped me prepare for the exam. And this is the link over here that I'm going to paste in the description below. It has 250 practice questions for the DC exam, right? Now, this is pretty long, right? I went through this list two times, so basically 500 questions, and it breaks down for you, again, the sections, and it gives you a whole bunch of questions and answers. Highly recommend, right, this tip. Please go to the site and go through this list at least once. I went through it, like I said, twice, and I went through it the last time, the night before the exam. So the last day, all I did was practice these questions and answers before going to the test. And I scheduled the test for seven in the morning the next day so I could be fresh and, and you know hit this just before going to work. And it went really, really well. So those are my tips for how you can get DCA certified. And once you get DCA certified, you have the right to put this uh, logo here, the Docker Certified Associate on your website. And you feel like a, like a rock star, I guess. Who knows? We'll see how you feel. So let me know how your Docker uh, Certified Associate experience goes and uh, write down in the description below. All right, guys. Good luck.